Hi and welcome back to the Fractured Rooster Garage. As always, I'm Josh and today we've got a little bit different of a project. As you can see behind me, well and in front of me, my gate fell down. We don't just work on cars here at the Fractured Rooster Garage. I, I built that entire shop behind me. I poured the concrete we're standing on and today we're going to rebuild this fence that I'm standing in front of. First off, I apologize for the wind, but uh, as I said, I'm in Kansas, so as you can imagine, I can't really can't really do much about that. Uh, here is our materials to replace not just this section, but we're also going to replace about a 25-foot section on the other side of the house, just so you know whatever's facing the front of the house uh, all matches and looks the same. I'm going to build it back pretty much the way it was, but I'm going to move it forward a little bit to add some security to the side entrance garage door. Uh, that should give us a nice 12 foot swing and give us a little bit more area here in the backyard to store trailers and, and whatnots. As you can see, the wind just sheared those old posts off right, right, at, the, right at the dirt line. And uh, thankfully those broke off at the surface because that means I don't have to, don't have to pull them out. There's no concrete above the surface here, so I'm just going to leave those down there. Looks like we've got one, two posts to pull. We might leave this one here. This one ties into the existing fence owned by the neighbors. So I'll probably leave that one in place and tie onto it and just run forward another, I'm going to guess, 14 feet. So how do you pull a fence post? I was sitting around racking my brain and I realized, wait, I'm a car guy. I'm perfectly equipped for this already. I've got a I've got a cherry picker. That would give you a couple thousand pounds of pulling force just straight up. So, and then you it's on wheels. You could move the whole thing around. Seems like a win to me. So I'm gonna go grab that cherry picker, get it set up, bring it over here and uh, get rid of what posts we have left. Wish me luck. It looks like we've got a couple of screws over here to deal with. Oops. Just let those fall wherever. You'll find them later with the lawnmower. Okay, what are we working with here? Uh, timber, not an actual post. Which tells me this was kind of just scabbed together once already. And nails, no screws. Again, no wonder this thing fell over. Okay, well, let's pry this off of here. We'll pry it off with the I'm only asking once. Okay, that's down. Jeez. Well, it's a little bit to wrangle it into place. But hopefully this gets easier. And come up to your picker. Somehow. That yeah, looks like it's not going to work. All right, fingers crossed. It's out. Would have just broke it off at the surface. I think it was pulling it out though. There just wasn't enough wood to uh, to make it work. Oh, 
Well, that was fairly easy, despite me breathing heavy. Uh, the next step is going to be to get all this off of the trailer because I needed to haul that lumber out of here. Hi, and welcome back on day two of the fence build. Uh, I've taken the liberty to drive a stake in where I think I want the post. That's where the hinged post is going to be. And I drug a line across about 12 feet long for the gate. And I'm just testing the, the swing here to make sure I'm not going to interfere with my, with my ramp going into my garage here. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. It's going to give me a good 12 foot space. We're going to have to move that firewood somewhere else, but that's not a big deal. So the next step is going to be to grab some of those non-treated 2x4s I picked up. They're 8 feet long, uh, and I'm going to lay those on the ground just to set up my post spacing here. Uh, at every joint will be where a post would be, because I want an 8 foot span from post to post, as you can see there. Uh, we're going to continue that straight forward, 8 feet in between each post. And we'll just see how many posts we need and where they're going to be. And uh, we'll try and auger some holes and get some posts set today. Well, we know we want this first post right next to the concrete, so I'm going to go ahead and stab it in there. Well, after about 10 minutes of augering, we've made it almost as deep as we need to get. So I've got about 10 more inches to go before I can safely put this post in without the fear of water getting under it and uh, freezing and pushing that post out of the ground. Once I get that one augered, I'll measure over eight feet from the center, put another post in, turn my corner and go, go back to my uh, existing fence. We'll, uh, we'll see you later in the day when that sun is probably most of the way across the horizon. Well, I got a little carried away once I got those holes augered. I uh, got too excited and threw the post in there without uh, having the camera on. I needed three to span this about 12 feet, 13 feet. And I thought I could put an extra one here, an extra one there, and I thought, why don't I just do both? That way we have four posts supporting this heavy gate as it swings open and closed. Um, so that seemed like the right thing to do. And this will give me or somebody an option to put a small gate in here in the future that might be able to get a mower in and out without having to open the big gate. So that took maybe an hour and a half. Uh, I'll probably bring you back after I've got all these posts in and kind of temporarily set up as I already did with the front. And uh, we'll be ready to pour some concrete, set some posts and start building a gate. So see you then. I went ahead and turned the corner, put two more posts in to connect it to our existing fence. And today, we're going to level these up with some fence levels and throw some concrete in those holes to make this permanent. So uh, first and foremost, we'll set these outer two with some concrete. Let those cure maybe just, just an hour or two uh, to get set up. And then we can true up the centers in between them. Nothing fancy on the concrete, just a 60 pound bag of general purpose. Now it's time to put some stringers, runners, I don't know what you want to call them. Uh, we're going to hang three rows. I think we're going to go 12 inches up from the bottom, 12 inches down from the top, and one right dead center. You can see my marks there. I marked the top and the bottom of each of those 2x4s. And then transcribe them onto each of the posts so I know where they're going to sit in every post. That way I don't get confused on whether the 2x4 goes above or below the line. It's just, it's between the lines on all of these. So the 2x4 is going to go on the outside of all these posts because we want the, the nice aesthetic side going to the, to the street. And you'll notice that the center two posts are offset an inch and a half. And that was because we have to span this big distance here. Uh, now I'll be able to put a full 10 foot 2x4 or 8 foot in the center here. Uh, this way it's double layered. 
I feel it's going to be stronger. Again, we're going to have a metal gate hanging out here. It's going to be putting a, a good amount of force out on this last post. All right, well, let's get those two by fours on there. Welcome back. Uh, as you can see, we've got our double-faced front boards on. Uh, that second post might need a little bit of a shim. It's a little crooked up there, but we uh, will fix that shortly. Uh, we turn the corner. We're running back to the existing fence here. I just need to get in there. So I'm going to use my oscillating tool. Well, I guess it's plank time. Uh, so I've done this a couple different ways. In the past, I've put one at both ends, set the height I want, and then stretched a string between the two. But the problem with that is, as soon as you touch the string with the next board, because you always want to slide the board up to the string, every time you touch it, you move that string kind of microscopically, and you get to the other end and you realize you're a half inch or a full inch higher than what you wanted. So. I think today I'm going to do this 2x4 trick on the ground. The ground's not perfectly flat, uh, but this board will kind of give us a nice arc if it's there. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I'm just going to start throwing these up here and see how it looks. And just like that, we're done. We got all the planks on, we've got one. We're gonna have to throw on the table saw over here to rip that down to fill in our gap, but uh, I think that looks very good for one inch cedar planks. Uh, I went that route just for ease. That's half the boards to put up, so half the, half the mistakes you could make. Uh, I like our triple stringers, runners, whatever they're called. That ought to add some strength and we doubled up this front here. It's going to carry the weight of that gate, so could not be happier. Just a little bit of planning and everything usually turns out right, so if you're doing something like this at home, draw it on paper once, twice, three times, uh, Google some stuff. It's really not that hard, just it's all in the planning. Uh, the last thing we have to do on the fence is to hang a gate, obviously, and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do there. I figured I'd get it to this point, and that way I can have some hard measurements to on our opening here. And uh, like I just talked about, we'll go back to the drawing board. We'll get down with some pen and paper. Not really sure what we're going to do with that gate, but uh, we'll figure it out. Hi, and welcome back to the part two of the fence and gate build. It's been probably two months since I set all of this in motion. The only thing I've really done to the fence since uh, the, for part one was I added some plastic caps that I found on Amazon for, I don't know, two or three dollars a piece. Uh, that's really the only fence update since the last video. Uh, however, I did run town and buy some 2x2 two two square tubing, which we have uh, utilized to construct a 13 foot by 4 foot gate. Nothing fancy, just a nice little A-frame. I welded it up here yesterday. Uh, that's really about it. We've got some weld on hinges to put on today, and I think we're going to gusset these corners that don't have anything in them, so these upper two just because I've already got them, not that it really needs it. But we'll throw some gussets up there and clean this thing up and get it hung. Once it hangs right, 
Uh, I'll wipe it all down with some brake cleaner, clean up the metal real nice, grind all my welds, and throw a nice coat of brown or black paint on it. Well, now that you're caught up, let's play some truck Tetris and clear out the driveway. Uh, we'll put the gate on that rolling cart over there. We'll weld on the gussets and the hinges. And then uh, I got a buddy coming over that's going to help me hang this on, on the posts. So, see you shortly. All right, got all that switched around. Got the gate on the cart. And I uh, just wanted to show you real quick these hinges that I bought off of Amazon. They've got a single ball bearing at the top there that sits on the top of that pin just to carry the weight. It's got a grease circ on it, keep it lubricated and help keep water out of there. Uh, these just weld on to the side of the frame. Obviously a three quarter inch bolt. It's gonna go through a four by four post. So I'm gonna point these up. The A will point up on the gate. Uh, I'm just gonna weld these on here where I think it's appropriate. And then we'll transfer the holes over to the post after we get these welded on. It looks pretty good. I'll do the same at the bottom. The idea is to spread them out as wide as possible to give you the widest, uh, most stable stance possible. So I'll burn these on at the ends. Uh, then we'll probably rig this all up on my engine hoist, wheel it out there and kind of hoist it in place, mark the post on the fence, and bolt it in. Well, that was a feat and it reminded me what I intended to do this morning and that was put all this firewood in my wheelbarrow, move it to the other side of the house because we're going to need that space for this gate to swing. But as you can see here, all we really have to do is measure our pickup points for the gate, uh, secure it, and I'm kind of thinking maybe, maybe support this, this corner post. What I might end up doing is putting another post here to make a triangle, but uh, we can do that later. Let's get this firewood out of the way and we'll finish it up. I think it looks pretty good. The bolts over here are fairly flush. I think we're going to end up sitting somewhere, somewhere about a half inch off, maybe three quarters of an inch off that post, which will put us almost touching those vertical bricks over here. So we've got We've got the room, just barely. Cool. Okay, now we just mark the 4x4 post and sink our, our hinge bases in there. And then we can get this cherry picker out of here. All right, so that's the center-ish of that bolt. All right. Calibrated eyeball, don't fail me now. There's a horizontal. Better go get a pin. Don't trust the eyeball today. And here's the thickness of the gate. I want it to be flushed on this post, so scribe a center line. Okay, that's one. Okay. Now the fun part, we gotta try to line up these hinges. I think maybe we just need to open and close it a time or two and it should work its way down. Well, I'm happy with that. I can, I can one hand that. Yeah, it's pretty wobbly here. I don't like that at all. So I'm going to sink one more post in here and that'll act as a stop for it also so that it doesn't 
go beyond 90 and bind on the post here. Okay, well that's phase one, it's hung. That was the hardest, most difficult part, is building it, hanging it. Looks pretty much exactly like it did in my head. I'm pretty happy with this, actually. The fence is hung, it's painted. As you can see, those bearing hinges are doing their job just, just perfectly. All the way to the trailer. Uh, it's got a lot of flex to it. It's, pull, it's pulling over on that corner post quite a bit. It, it does have a lot of flex to it. As you can see, the gate is, is bouncing and it's flexing this post pretty hard. So we're certainly gonna put another post in right here to, to act as a stop for the gate. And we're gonna tie all three of these together, as I've mentioned, but yeah, it doesn't take hardly any weight um, to make that bounce. So it obviously needs a wheel to control that flex. And also when it's parked against the house, I want to be able to take the weight off of that post. So I went and bought a wheel, a cheap one. Uh, we'll just jam it in there. Uh, so that'll be the plan for this. Uh, the wheel's nothing fancy. It is, it is bearinged. I didn't want it to be bushed. It is bearinged, which was important to me, and it's got a shielded bearing to help keep water and stuff out of there. I wish it had a grease circ on the end to make it serviceable, but beggars can't be choosers, as this was $2.95. I wasn't going to complain or argue about that price. Um, I think maybe right about in here is where that's going to wind up. All right, well, off camera, I added the gate latch and a fence plank to the fence because that stuff is just too difficult to do while holding a camera. Uh, I'm holding about a 16th off the brick. That's how that works. And it's got the, uh, you know, a latch on the outside as well, or a handle on the outside. Problem with that handle is that it's a little bit too short. So we've got to take this apart, cut it, and extend it two inches. just barely long enough I guess it engages for a quarter of an inch there I'm gonna say that's good all right well that fits and works so we'll move on to building that plate to mount onto the house here's the receiving end of this latch here as you can see it's got a pretty large rectangle cut into it so we'll have to duplicate something like that onto a plate of steel I have here in the garage Here's a plate of steel. Uh, I'm just gonna put a spacer behind it. I know this is pretty thin, but uh, I really don't see a reason to hang like a full quarter inch sheet of steel on that wall. And I certainly don't wanna drill a hole and, well, work a rectangle into a quarter of an inch plate when I could cut it into this. So probably dead center or maybe closer to the left. That way this plate's hidden from the front. That makes more sense, right? Well, it kind of looks like the world's worst light switch cover, but I think it's going to work by sliding and pling, just pop it in just like that. That'll, that'll hold it one direction, and we'll have to put those stops on going the other direction, which kind of has me wondering about the uh, 180 degree swing. So we may have to do away with one of the two. We'll see how this works out. All right, now it's time to get excited. I broke out the hammer drill and sunk four anchors into the wall. 
And guess what? We have a gate latch. It's a little noisy. It's not going to be easy on the ears when it's when it's windy outside, but it's functioning. But it does overswing, like I feared. So I think we're just going to have to nix the 180 degree swing uh, more than anything because there's going to have to be a gap here with no fence plank. I'm going to have to have about a four and a half inch wide area with no plank, and it's going to look silly. So we're just going to stop it at 180. We'll, we'll put the uh, put the angle brackets on the front like we talked about and put just like a little two by two strip of cedar or something there to, to hold it in place. But that's awesome. I couldn't be happier. I really couldn't. I think next we'll put some planks on it just so that I can say it's finished. And then uh, we'll build a little platform over here for the gate to park on when it's open. And then I think we're pretty well done. Hi, welcome back. The gate's done, the gate latches. And uh, I think where we left off was this concrete block. Now I just built a crude form out of some plywood I had laying around. Uh, I think it's some melamine actually, so it released the concrete very easily. Uh, poured this up last night and I didn't get a chance to finish it. I covered it up and I went to dinner and I had a couple too many margaritas and I forgot all about it. I came out this morning and thought, oh no, oh no, our concrete. We didn't get a chance to form it. I wanted to put a, a, a kind of a channel or a gutter in this top here so that when the wheel climbed, it had a kind of a detent to sit inside of. And I was going to come back and put a, a steel plate on this backside to keep the wheel from traveling too far, which we can still do. But I think I'll probably do that off camera because that's a couple of days away. I want this concrete to set up nice and firm before I start grinding on it or it's just going to crumble. Aside from working on cars, woodworking is was one of my favorite hobbies. So this allowed me to get out here and use some of my tools I haven't touched in a long time. And I think the fence came out great. If you have if you have a comment or a suggestion on how I could have done this differently, leave a comment below. Maybe it'll help somebody else out that stumbled across this video. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next video where we'll be back in the shop doing something. This week on the Fractured Rooster, we fixed a fence that the wind blew down, and uh, the chicks come to check it out. Well, apparently my auger brings all the cats to the yard. What's up, Rones?